Hey, so quick disclaimer uh, for anybody watching this video who isn't my uh, teacher. This is a um, project to see how you can um, uh, implement your passions and your desires into a career. So for anybody watching, that's what this is about. Now, you might be able to tell just from watching what I do in the class, but you can probably assume that it would be something to do with computers, and you are 100% correct. That is my passion. All things technology and video games, for the most part. I play a lot of video games, I'm good at a lot of them, and that's just my passion, and that would be something that would be so fun to make an actual living out of. I think that would be a fantastic thing, because technology is always growing, right? You're going to have um, more stuff to do. You're going to have more games to play, and your audience is going to get bigger with those coming out. So it would be fantastic to have a job centric around video games. Now, how would you go about doing this, you might ask? You might think to yourself, oh, no one's going to make a job out of playing video games. What are you talking about? The market for it is already precedented, and it's huge. I'm going to be talking about three games that I play that I could definitely make a solid living off of if I put my mind to it and I tried. Those three games are Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Rainbow Six Siege, and Clone Hero. The first one, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or CSGO for short, is a tactical first-person shooter made by Valve and Hidden Path Entertainment in the year 2012. Now, why would I be talking about a game from 2012? That's fairly old, right? Well, it's still getting updates to this day. In 2019, it's, it has the biggest player base out of any game on Steam, the world's most popular um, digital marketplace for games and in-game items. And with a following this big and a game centered around tactics, there is one huge way that people have made money from being good at this game and that is eSports. eSports are basically video game sports, basically testing your abilities in the game against other people for money. Now, how could one aspect of this game that probably stemmed from a bunch of people sitting around in their basement who all brought their computers to one house to just play some games with each other? How big, how massive could this have gotten? No Molotov to use, there's a smoke on the site anyway. Forrest has picked up one. Can he go any better than that? He knows it's been blessed. Oh, oh my God, Forrest! Here he comes once again. The first base is a trend. He's going to hit the ground there. It's cold. Oh, oh what? A jumping double from Cold! As Cloud9 sets the push up. Oh! Oh, it's happened! They made it work! Cloud9 are your E League major champions! The answer is pretty big. Allow me to read off some of the uh, tournament names and their prizes um, for 2018. Uh, ESL Pro League Season 8 Finals, a uh, prize pool of $7,500, no, mm, $750,000, that's a bit of a bigger number. Um, Esports Championship Series Season 6 Finals, um, uh, $660,000. $100,000, I am bad at talking today, uh, ESL Pro League Season 8, $105,000, Intel Extreme Masters, uh, that would be 13 in Chicago, a uh, quarter of a million dollars, uh, Epicenter 2018, $295,000, they, they have some big prize pools, um, Face It Major, London 2018, uh, Majors are the biggest tournaments in Counter-Strike, they have I think three per year, a prize pool of $1 million. That's a, that's a pretty uh, lucrative thing to get into. That's a big prize pool. And now, with prize pools this big, being the best of the best gets you a lot. Meet Astralis. Astralis is a Danish team uh, consisting of considerably um, five of the best players in the world right now. Their um, teamwork is insane. Their individual skill is also just fantastic. And... They have won so many tournaments in 2018. They were participating in this um, event called the Intel Grand Slam. And the Intel Grand Slam, I believe, is where you have um, a bunch of tournaments in a year. 
and if one team wins all of those tournaments, they get a lot of money. Alright, so it says here that the Intel Grand Slam is a prize of $1 million to the first team that wins four premier events organized by ESL or DreamHack Masters during a window of 10 consecutive events. They have to win four events in a span of 10. Now, for the best team in the world, we almost thought this wouldn't happen. It's just so rare for this to happen. But, they did it. After winning uh, ESL Pro League Season 8, Intel Extreme Masters 13, uh, ESL Pro League Season 7, and DreamHack Masters Marseille 2018. They won it. And as a complimentary prize for that, if I'm not mistaken, they won gold bars with their usernames etched into them. Solid gold bars. That's, that's, um, that's pretty, um, that's pretty good, I'd say. Now, Rainbow Six Siege is a very similar game to Counter-Strike. Um, it's also a tactical first-person shooter, but it focuses more on use of your operator's special ability. Every operator has a special ability that, that they can use to gain themselves an advantage. And using that is integral to the game, because no one has the same... No one can play the same operator in one given round, and no one else has something similar to your ability. So you have to make that work with what you will. Now, Rainbow Six Siege is a fairly newer game. So I would argue that the um, esports community hasn't really lifted off on it. Let me read you off some of the tournaments. Um, okay, so just for comparison, the biggest uh, prize pool in 2018 was only $50,000. I say only, but keep in mind that CSGO, their biggest prize pool was one was 1.5 million. So this is still a this is still considerable this is still a considerable amount of money for a video game, right? But it's just not as big and it's more recent. With CSGO coming out in 2012, Rainbow Six Siege only came out in 2015. That is a three-year difference for a game to grow, and that can be a lot, depending on what the uh, uh, developers do with it. So I'm not going to spend as much time as I did with this on Counter-Strike, but it's just to prove that there are a lot of games like that. It doesn't have to be one set game. You can certainly go out and branch out to whatever you want to do. Now time for one game that is really different from all the rest. This would be Clone Hero. Clone Hero is a Guitar Hero clone, hence the name Clone Hero, um, that was released, I think, earlier in 2016? Now, how would I make money off of this game? There's no real competitiveness to it. Of course, there's some competitiveness in getting high scores, but there's really no competitiveness like the other two games. Well, if you're good at the game, and you know how to play it, you can make a career on Twitch or on YouTube, such as shown by these two YouTubers right here, uh, Asai, who has a fairly large following of I think 400,000 subs the last time I checked, and Yukog Monkey, who also has a very similar following. Oh my god, I got a first shot! Told you I got this. Now, if you're good enough, you could certainly go ahead and do what these guys do. You can make money off it. Because the way YouTube works is they get money from ads. But the way Twitch works is that people will just give them money through, through donations and subscriptions on Twitch. And that's how they get paid. You could certainly do this. Now, this whole thing is just a hypothetical. There is probably very little chance I'll actually go out and make a name for myself on YouTube or in the esports community. It just, it just depends on what I'm willing to do. There's my passion project. There's what I could do with my life. Hope you enjoyed.